to make the old writings. That was hard and took a long time. My knowledge made me happy. It was like a fire in my heart. Most of all, I liked to hear of the old days and the stories of the gods. I asked myself many questions that I could not answer, but it was good to ask them. At night, I would lie awake and listen to the wind. It seemed to me that it was the voice of the gods as they flew through the air. 316. We are not ignorant like the forest people. Our women spin wool on the wheel. Our priests wear a white robe. We do not eat grubs from the tree. We have not forgotten the old writings, although they are hard to understand. Nevertheless, my knowledge and my lack of knowledge burned in me. I wished to know more. When I was a man at last, I came to my father and said, It is time for me to go on my journey. Give me your leave. Now, in some ways, this story opens almost like a myth, doesn't it? Where you have a very quick introduction, you have a young man who is telling his story in the first person, who says, I loved the fact that I could learn things about the old days, but there were so many questions that I had. By the way, put it in your notes at level one. Whatever culture he's a part of, different from the, notice, forest people. Why? In a word, technology. Write that down. In a word, technology. Notice he says that we have the spinning wheel, which of course is going to make us go, well, that's kind of old technology, a spinning wheel. He says our priests wear white robes, but we eat different. We can grow some of our food. That is to say technology. Agriculture is a form of technology, is it not? Right? Technology is not just that smartphone that you have there in your pocket. Technology is the chair you're sitting on. Technology is the clothing that you wear. Technology is any time humans do anything to make their life a little bit better. Understood? Right? And he says, unlike the forest people who kind of live out there in the forest and they don't have any knowledge, we have knowledge. He says... My knowledge and my lack of knowledge burned in me. By the way, note the word burned. I wish to know more. Now this is already going to be one of our important questions at 3B, so write it down. Is the quest to know more always a good thing? Notice finally, it's time for him to go on his journey. We have already said that one of the most important stories, and we have said that we are the stories we tell, the stories we retell, the stories we accept, the stories we reject. We, If it's true, we are these stories, and these stories are central to who we are, both individually and collectively. One of the most famous stories is the journey story, write it down, the journey motif. We know this from our study in our freshman year of the Odyssey, and of course the famous Odysseus, who takes his famous journey to get back to Ithaca and all of that. Here, notice the son comes to the father and says, it's time for me to go on my journey, the vision quest, the quest to discover who you are by going on a journey. Jot it down at 3A. When you're uh, later in high school, we'll talk about Jack Kerouac on the road and the famous journey novel of all American stories. Uh, we, we see this motif over and over and over again, the famous journey. He says to his daddy, it's time for me to go on my journey. Let me go on my trip. Gee, I wonder where he wants to go on his trip. He looked at me for a long time, stroking his beard. Then he said at last, Yes, it is time. That night, in the house of the priesthood, I asked for and received purification. My body hurt, but my spirit was a cool stone. It was my father himself who questioned me about my dreams. He bade me look into the smoke of the fire and see. I saw and told what I saw. It was what I have always seen, a river, and beyond it, a great dead place, and in it, the gods walking. I have always thought about that. His eyes were stern when I told him. He was no longer my father, but a priest. He said, this is a strong dream.
It is mine, I said, while the smoke waved and my head felt light. They were singing the star song in the outer chamber, and it was like the buzzing of bees in my head. He asked me how the gods were dressed, and I told him how they were dressed. We know how they were dressed from the book, but I saw them as if they were before me. When I had finished, he threw the sticks three times and studied them as they fell. This is a very strong dream, he said. It may eat you up. I am not afraid, I said, and looked at him with both eyes. My voice sounded thin in my ears, but that was because of the smoke. He touched me on the breast and the forehead. He gave me the bow and the three arrows. Take them, he said. It is forbidden to travel east. It is forbidden to cross the river. It is forbidden to go to the place of the gods. All these things are forbidden. All these things are forbidden, I said. But it was my voice that spoke, and not my spirit. He looked at me again. My son, he said, once I had young dreams. If your dreams do not eat you up, you may be a great priest. If they eat you, you are still my son. Now go on your journey. I went fasting, as is the law. My body hurt, but not my heart. When the dawn came, I was out of sight of the village. I prayed and purified myself, waiting for a sign. The sign was an eagle. It flew east. Now, let's pause for a moment. Level one, three things. One, young man comes to his priest father and says, it's time for my journey. Father says, you, you're probably right. Notice they go through a ritual, which again, kind of places the story way in the past, right? And he asks, part two, about a dream, the father asks, about a dream that the young man had. The dream says that in his dream he saw how the gods were dressed. He saw them in uh, across the river. And his father says this is a strong dream. These oracles is the way the Greeks thought about them at Delphi. You went and you asked about the future and you got information from a priest for playing the same game. But look at this. He says it's a strong dream. He said it may eat you up. In other words, your curiosity may get you in some serious trouble. Notice the boy. I'm not afraid, he says. Notice he gets a bow and three arrows, which obviously places our story where in relationship to time. Most will argue way in the past, right? When you are with bows and arrows. One more time, remember what is forbidden. It is forbidden, right? Let's play that game. He says, it's forbidden, the father. Forbidden to travel east. Forbidden to cross the river. Forbidden to go to the place of the gods. All these things are forbidden. The son says, all these things are forbidden. In other words, I promise I'm not going to go there. Right? He says it one more time. If your dreams don't eat you up, you may be a great priest. Now go on your journey. Notice it will be an eagle that will serve as his sign. And the sign of the eagle flying east. We mentioned this in our study of the Odyssey in our freshman year. How in the Iliad and the Odyssey, often... If you're looking for a sign that tells you about what you should do, if an eagle shows up, that's usually a good sign. And you follow wherever the eagle is going to fly. Uh-oh, the eagle will take the young boy east. All right, let's go to work. We'll see what happens next. Sometimes, signs are sent by bad spirits. I waited again on the flat rock, fasting, taking no food. 317. I was very still. I could feel the sky above me and the earth beneath. I waited till the sun was beginning to sink. Then three deer passed in the valley, going east. They did not wind me or see me. There was a white fawn with them, a very great sign. I followed them at a distance, waiting for what would happen. My heart was troubled about going east, yet I knew that I must go. My head hummed with my fasting. I did not even see the panther spring upon the white fawn. But before I knew it, 
The bow was in my hand. I shouted, and the panther lifted his head from the fawn. It is not easy to kill a panther with one arrow, but the arrow went through his eye and into his brain. He died as he tried to spring. He rolled over, tearing at the ground. Then I knew I was meant to go east. I knew that was my journey. When the night came, I made my fire and roasted meat. Pause for a moment at level one, next stage of the journey. He kills a panther by shooting the panther right through the eye, and this tells him, I have to go east. See, for my gamers, they all of a sudden go, yeah, you know what, this is absolutely right. Why is it every game that I play that I like, in the game, there's a journey? I mean, think about that. You can't hardly name a game that you play that doesn't have some sense of this journey where you got to have these little contests and then you got to go from one place to another place from one stage to another stage and there's always this sense that we're going somewhere we've got to get somewhere for our young man in our story it's going east where it is forbidden notice how Benet already is setting us up to ask some obvious questions why is it that the land across the river the land of the gods is forbidden what has gone on there that has made it forbidden? By the way, note, he kills the panther through the use of technology, a weapon. Yes? Let's keep going. It is eight suns' journey to the east, and a man passes by many dead places. The forest people are afraid of them, but I am not. Once, I made my fire on the edge of a dead place at night, and next morning, in the dead house, I found a good knife, little rusted. That was small to what came afterward, but it made my heart feel big. Always, when I looked for game, it was in front of my arrow, and twice I passed hunting parties of the forest people without their knowing. So I knew my magic was strong and my journey clean in spite of the law. Toward the setting of the eighth sun, I came to the banks of the great river. Uh oh. It was half a day's journey after I had left the God Road. We do not use the God Roads now, for they are falling apart into great blocks of stone, and the forest is safer going. A long way off, I had seen the water through trees, but the trees were thick. At last, I came out upon an open place at the top of a cliff. There was the great river below, like a giant in the sun. It was very long, very wide. It could eat all the streams we know and still be thirsty. Its name is Udison, the sacred, the long. No man of my tribe had seen it, not even my father, the priest. It was magic, and I prayed. Then... All right, now pause for a second. This is significant because Benet's going to only slowly lead you to understand that this city of the gods that we are coming to, the river, notice, is called, do you see the spelling? Udison. O-U-D-I-S-S-U-N. Of course, it'll be later that we'll begin to realize this is the Hudson River. And the city that our young man is about to explore is the city that in the old days was known as New York across the Hudson River. What is going on in this story? Page 318, now you're into the story and now of course the unfolding of the story is the key. I have told you some things to help you read the story better which you normally might not understand until you get further into the story. Here we go. You're going to begin to see, though, that Benet is playing games with us to let us know something went down. What happened? I raised my eyes and looked south. It was there, the place of the gods. How can I tell what it was like? You do not know. It was there, in the red light, and they were too big to be houses. It was there with the red light upon it, mighty and ruined. 
I knew that in another moment the gods would see me. I covered my eyes with my hands and crept back into the forest. Surely that was enough to do and live. Surely it was enough to spend the night upon the cliff. The forest people themselves do not come near. Yet all through the night, I knew that I should have to cross the river and walk in the places of the gods, although the gods ate me up. My magic did not help me at all, and yet there was a fire in my bowels, a fire in my mind. When the sun rose, I thought, my journey has been clean. Now I will go home from my journey. But even as I thought so, I knew I could not. If I went to the place of the gods, I would surely die. But if I did not go, I could never be at peace with my spirit again. The choice, right? It is better to lose one's life than one's spirit, if one is a priest and the son of a priest. Nevertheless, as I made the raft, the tears ran out of my eyes. The forest people could have killed me without fight if they had come upon me then, but they did not come. When the raft was made, I said the sayings for the dead and painted myself for death. My heart was cold as a frog and my knees like water, but the burning in my mind would not let me have peace. As I pushed the raft from the shore, I began my death song. I had the right. It was a fine song. I am John, son of John, I sang. My people are the hill people. They are the men. I go into the dead places, but I am not slain. I take the metal from the dead places, but I am not blasted. I travel upon the god roads and am not afraid. Ea, I have killed the panther. I have killed the fawn. Ea, I have come to the great river. No man has come there before. It is forbidden to go east, but I have gone. Forbidden to go on the great river, but I am there. Open your hearts, you spirits, and hear my song. Now I go to the place of the gods. I shall not return. My body is painted for death and my limbs weak, but my heart is big as I go to the place of the gods. So the first part of our story is getting ready to do what is forbidden. Notice the choice that the young man has. Are you with me on page 318? He says, my magic didn't help me at all, and yet there was a fire in my bowels, in my gut, a fire in my mind, the desire to know something. When the sun rose, I thought, my journey has been clean. Now I'll go home from my journey. In other words, I've seen enough. But even as I thought so, I knew I could not. And then the choice. If I went to the place of the gods, I would surely die. But if I did not go, I could never be at peace with my spirit again. And then the final line, it's better to lose one's life than one's spirit. If one is a priest and the son of a priest. So he begins his death song. Let's put it in our notes at level one. The death song sounds a lot like a Native American song from an ancient time. Yes? That is to say, he's singing his song, convincing himself that even though he's going to go to the city of the gods and he's going to die, he has to do it because he has to know. It's an interesting question. When was the last time, 3B question, when was the last time that you felt this need to know something that strongly? Dude, I have to know. I have to know. All right, I'm on page 319. Here we go. The city of the gods. I wonder what's going to happen here for us. All the same, when I came to the place of the gods, I was afraid. Afraid. The current of the great river is very strong. It gripped my raft with its hands. That was magic, for the river itself is wide and calm. I could feel evil spirits about me in the bright morning. I could feel their breath on my neck as I was swept down the stream. Never have I been so much alone. I tried to think of my knowledge, but it was a squirrel's heap of winter nuts. There was no strength in my knowledge anymore, and I felt small and naked as a new-hatched bird, alone upon the great river, the servant of the gods. Yet, 
After a while, my eyes were opened, and I saw. I saw both banks of the river. I saw that once there had been god roads across it, though now they were broken and fallen like broken vines. Bridges, right? Bridges. Very great they were, and wonderful, and broken. Broken in the time of the great burning when the fire fell out of the sky. And always, the current took me nearer to the place of the gods, and the huge ruins rose before my eyes. I do not know the customs of rivers. We are the people of the hills. I tried to guide my raft with the pole, but it spun around. I thought the river meant to take me past the place of the gods and out into the bitter water of the legends. I grew angry then. My heart felt strong. I said aloud, I am a priest and the son of a priest. The gods heard me. They showed me how to paddle with the pole on one side of the raft. The current changed itself. I drew near to the place of the gods. When I was very near, my raft struck and turned over. All right, here we go. I can swim in our lakes. I swam to the shore. There was a great spike of rusted metal sticking out into the river. I hauled myself up upon it and sat there, panting. I had saved my bow and two arrows and the knife I found in the dead place, but that was all. My raft went whirling downstream toward the bitter water. I looked after it and thought if it had trod me under, at least I would be safely dead. Nevertheless, when I had dried my bowstring and restrung it, I walked forward to the place of the gods. It felt like ground underfoot. It did not burn me. It is not true.